Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now this week we're going to kind of be playing catch up. I'm going to bring in on a couple projects that I've really, I've already started, but I figured, you know, you'd enjoy them. So we're going to be making an adjustable run out back plate for this three jaw chuck. This goes into our cutter grinder power head and we're going to be working on our keyed washers for our grinding wheel hubs. And like always, I got some other stuff I'll show you too. So let's go in the shop and get started. Alright guys, like I said, I've already started on this project. It's a piece of 316 stainless steel, and all it is is a back plate for our power head on our cutter grinder. I want to put a three jaw chuck on this thing to allow me to hold stuff larger than a 5C collet will allow, because you're limited to just slightly over an inch with the 5C collets. And I wanted to be able to adjust the run out, both the radial run out and the lateral run out. So I come up with a quick design that uh, you know will allow me to at least tweak it. So I'm drilling these holes for the mounting of the chuck slightly oversized to give me the ability to adjust the radial run out. And then I'm going to come around the perimeter and put some brass tipped set screws, they're quarter twenty, uh, in, in the face of this uh, plate that I can, so I can adjust the lateral run out. And this is just a number seven uh, drill for our quarter twenty. Here we're just power tapping with the mill and uh, just a quarter 20 tap chucked up in a drill chuck. I tightened it decently tight. You can see it slipping a little bit there. Um, if I get in a bind, you know, it'll just slip. Those high speed steel taps and those hardened jaws on the uh, drill chuck uh, don't grip that uh, tap very well. So this is pretty safe really. You just gotta be careful and make sure you're lined up with your holes. I'm just reversing out the hand and uh, using this sinker lead, which uh, actually works pretty good on stainless. set my uh, stop on my quill and the way I get even to burn all the way around. It takes like 10 seconds to set up. Here's something I've neglected to do for a while. Now, the last time I used this thing, I was using it on the edge of the table. I had it rotated and I was pushing pretty hard with a big drill bit and my table moved a little and I'd forgotten about it. But uh, I walked in this morning, I seen it and I just happened to catch my eye. You could see it was out. So, you know, not everybody, you know, they set it on zero, but if you really want to check it, just a mag base off of the uh, quill and uh, run around here. That's the way I set mine. Can't adjust this one front and back, but you can side to side. So, cheap drill press, but it is nice if, uh, if they're set proper. Zero. Zero. And it's within about 10 thousandths front to back, which is good enough for you know, cheap drill press. I'm actually surprised it's that good. So there you go. Quick little tip. Here's a little example of it's just a tool extension, is all it is. We got a deburring tool in the end. And sometimes with a part like this, you can't get a drill chuck down in here to deburr this, and your shanks on your tooling aren't long enough. So, you know, quick little simple thing that is basic, but you may not think about it. It may not be, you know, obvious, but yeah, just make a, an extension. And I use these stops on my drill press, the quill stops, so you can get even deburring on this machine too.
It's simple. It works. Just made out of a piece of drill rod. With set screw. There's uh, some shop dogs in here today. Let me uh, put this thing together and I'll give you a little more info on it. Now all this was was just a piece of stainless. I cut it out on the bandsaw. I bored the hole to fit. This has a step on it. This I already had this, so measured it, bored the hole to size, cut the OD, and then put a step on it that's actually smaller than the step inside of this chuck. That way I have just a little bit, probably ten thousandths of wiggle room, so I can adjust this chuck as far as running. So I also cut all these bolts or screws. These are just socket head cap screws. I uh, cut those on the cutter grinder for the first time and uh, cutting these to length was actually not that bad. Let me uh, take you over and I'll show you a clip of that. I got some, some of that footage. Right. Use our cut off disc. We've got our cap screw and a quarter inch collet. These are just quarter twenties. And we're running a cutoff disc. I've only ran one of these once before, so but it's a pretty neat way to cut stuff to length, although there's probably better ways. I've got my stop set and my screw set to the depth that I want. Close. That's it. And it's pretty quick. And it's a lot easier than holding them with pliers against a grinding wheel. Of course, you could just buy them to the right length to begin with. Okay, we got our Morse taper number three shank bolted to this back plate. That's all this is, is just the back plate for this little chuck here. And all these little set screws in the back. Those are just brass tipped quarter 20. And the idea is that uh, I'll be able to manipulate this chuck as far as run out just ever so slightly by tightening these screws and maybe not cranking these mounting bolts down. These holes for the mounting uh, to the chuck are slightly larger than the screws and it gives me just a little bit of play and I'm hoping that that amount of play will be enough to allow me to get almost no run out. I'll just snug these down just lightly that way when I get this on the actual uh, uh, powered head I can slightly bump it around torque the, er, and tension these screws if I have to in order to get uh, almost no run out. This is just a 100 millimeter chuck, uh, or basically 4 inches. So let's go put this on the unit and see if we can get it to, to run true. Alright, so I slid this arbor with the chuck on it inside the power head here and put a piece of stock in here that I know is pretty good. And I tighten these bolts just snugged them, the main bolts that hold this chuck onto the hub, and then I just tapped it a little to get the run out right at the chuck face good, and then I just manipulated the little brass tipped uh, set screws that I showed you until I got <laughs> a combination that worked. This took about 30 minutes, so there's no reason for me to drag you through the mud watching me tweak these bolts, loosen them back up, and do it again. It reminds me a lot like uh, centering something up in the fore jaw, a long shaft. You know, you one little tweak affects it somewhere else. So, but I finally got it pretty good. Let me bring you in here and show you the indicator. 
All right, let me show you where we're at. Now this is as good as I can get. This chuck is a, not a great chuck. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong. I mean, we're expecting a lot from it, uh, doing this with it. But, uh, let's see, there's one, two, three tenths. A little less than three tenths. But not much less, so... I mean, that's about as good as I can get at the chuck face. Let's check it out here. Now, I'm not worried about this movement that we've seen when we move this. That's just the alignment this way. We don't care about that. And then out here, that's probably an inch and a half, two inches out. We're about two tenths, two and a half tenths. So it's pretty consistent. And when I take this bar in and out, it's about the same. But uh, this chunk, uh, this chuck is kind of clunky, so uh, I think this is about as good as I can expect. Two tenths there, basically. And about three tenths here almost. So, you know, stuff you're going to put in the chuck, it's not going to be probably that critical anyway, but that's what we got. Well, it's finally that time. This uh, upper garden is definitely ready to pick. Me and my dad and, and Buddy, you can see him hiding in the corn down there, my dad's dog, uh, decided we'd pick this lower row, and it was definitely time. We didn't want to leave this in the field any longer. Or it's going to start getting hard. We've got quite a bit of it worked up now. I've got some photos I'll show you here in a minute, and uh, it's really turned into a great crop this year. Not much problems with raccoons or anything, but my dad every night would take Buddy out and walk him through the garden, and I think that really, you know, helped with the with the coon problem that we usually have. Got uh, one and a half bags off that lower row. Not too bad. And that's just the first time going through it. Uh, once it gets a little more time on that row, we'll go through it again and we won't get this much, but we'll get quite a bit more off of it. Well, here's the lower garden, and it's looking pretty good. We're starting to get silks on this. And, uh, got some deer prints in here, too. But, uh, won't be long. After this starts, you know, a couple weeks, we'll have corn. So, we're going to work on that up there. Probably a row a day, I would say. That's about all we can really work up in a day. So we'll work that up, and then uh, by the time we're done with that up there, this here should be close to ready. So it's uh, it's happening. Let's take a quick look at some of this stuff on the bench now. I'd have to say that this has turned out pretty good, and about as good as I would expect. A few tents run out, that's not too bad for a three-jaw chuck, and uh, having the ability to tweak the, the run out, uh, you know, is nice. For the oddball stuff that I do, you know, the larger stuff that I can't put in a 5C collet, I think this will be just fine. I need to make one for a, for a four-jaw, so I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, Keith Spinner sent me a gift. He sent me several of his stickers. This is just a couple of them. And uh, he sent me dupl basically duplicates of each. And uh, sent me two of his T-slot cleaners. One is the limited edition Barzy Summer Bash 2018. And uh, his logo, his, the pointing finger and the get her done. If you don't know Keith Spinner, go check him out. He, he really has a great channel. He has a lot of subscribers and, uh, and a lot of good content. And he sent me also just the standard version. I'm going to take this one and stick it up on the top of the sticker board. And then I'm going to use this one because it fits both my milling machine and my cutter grinder and my shaper. So it's a bonus. So thanks, Keith. I really appreciate it. All right, and <laughs> a really hard thing to make that I've been messing around with is these keyed washers. And this is the original. It's 35,000 thick. I made one that I'm going to use. This is made out of a piece of shim stock, and it's 30,000 thick. All I did was 
scrub out my lines, belt sand it, drill it, and then hand file out everything outside of the, the tops of the keys, and it took forever. There has to be a better way these work. And you can get good results with them, but they definitely take some time. I know that Stefan Gottswinner uh, had brazed in his. He just drilled out uh, the major and then uh, brazed, it, cut some slots and brazed in some keys, and then I think he surface ground them flat. But uh, I just went the old, old hand file away. This is just a piece of titanium. This was the first one I made just to, you know, see how I was going to approach the problem. Now, I also made a wrench for my... Uh, cutter grinder hubs and just like everything I make I made it really too tight now, it fits all my hubs but I don't want to have to fiddle with this thing to get it you know hooked onto my hubs I want it to slide on easily and uh, so I'm going to take these pins out this is just rough right now just on the, the uh, um, bandsaw and I'm going to push these pins out. We're going to put it in the cutter grinder and just dust these down a little bit just to make it to where they fit these holes a little bit better. And then uh, I'm going to work these outside edges, make this thing presentable, and press those pins back in. And then we may, if we have time, get started on one of these, and I'll show you how I do it, or how I plan to do this one anyway. So I got my lines scribed out on this washer that uh, I want to use for my cutter grinder hub. And uh, now it's time for the fun part. And by fun, I mean not fun and extremely difficult. I think I'm going to try to use the uh, Dremel tool with just a little cutoff blade to rough everything out. And then I'll hand file it till it fits. I got uh, some Flathead Ron stickers that I forgot to show. And uh, he's got a neat little channel worth a look, so go check out Flathead Ron. And then Stephen Lang from Shark River Machine sent me this one-inch micrometer head. It's a Starrett. Um, I'd seen it on Instagram posts that he made and uh, said, you know, I, I want to find me a couple of those because uh, they would make good carriage stops for the cutter grinder or finger height adjustments to get uh, good accurate uh, relief angles. And he just uh, sent me this one, so I wasn't really expecting it, and I appreciate it. I'm uh, definitely on the lookout for a couple more just like this would be would be real nice. So thank you, Stephen. I appreciate it. I got you guys stickers up on the board. There's Stephen Lang, and there's Flathead Ron. So thanks, guys. Let's go. Uh, let's go cut this thing out. Have these little non-reinforced uh, little cutoff wheels. They don't last long, and you can look at them wrong and they'll break. But uh, for this kind of stuff, they actually work pretty good. There's a bulk of it anyway. I'm making this uh, washer out of a piece of saw blade. My other one was a piece of shim stock. Both of them are pretty hard stuff. <sighs> this sucks. Let 
these are just chainsaw files. They're actually cheap and uh, pretty good. I don't want to ruin my little needle files on something like this. Buy these for a pretty reasonable price. And they're pretty good quality. Getting close. Still takes forever. <laughs> these don't have any teeth on the end. When I tap them, it just knocks all the loose stuff out of the teeth. These are the same way. They're, so I'm not damaging these files by tapping them. It's just quicker than grabbing a file card. And you never use the tip anyway, even if it does have T's on it. Test fit? And absolutely not. Not even close. Alright, through the magic of editing, in 15 minutes of my time or better, it kind of fits. Just still a little the little edges that I need to clean up, but there we go. I'll get this blue off of it, and we will have... Not that we already did, and I already made one, but I plan on making several of these hubs. We'll have another functional... ...keyed washer. I need to work on both. But you get the idea. It's not easy, but it can be done. And unless you want to invest in a 15-ton... ...press... You know, you're going to be stuck doing it the hard way, or if you have a plasma table, maybe. Here's what my yard has looked like far too often this summer. And, uh, you know, just with everything that goes on, full-time job, wife, kids, all the other things, YouTube channel, garden, heating with wood, something's got to give. Luckily, out in the country, nobody really cares what your yard looks like. Mount this hub to a wheel and try it out. There we go. Put it on the grinder. Alright, so I'm going to be grinding for the first time with this wheel and hub, of course, uh, on a piece of M3 high speed steel. And it's just a dual ended 60 degree tool, threading tool. And it's been hand ground on one end. Somebody's tried to sharpen it. And it also looks like it's been dropped. So all we're going to do is dress up this top of the tool just to bring it back to a good sharp, good sharp point. And I've never, like I said, used this wheel before, so we'll see how it uh, performs also. So I've got my fixture set up, and I'll bring in, and we'll grind this thing. Three to five thousand, just a guess on the hand wheel. And I'm in feeding probably five thousandths. Just a guess, just what feels good. Touched up both sides while I was at it because they both really needed it. So let's 
over the bench and get a look at it. And I'm happy with the way this thing is working. Right, here's a good close look. This is the first one we done. I done it with a four degree back rake. And then I just went ahead and hit the second one while I was at it. I did not do that spot on it. It was already in it. I just wasn't going grind, to grind it down you know, anymore to, to get that out. But uh, I really need to clean up these angles on the front. It's kind of dinged up along the front edge from beating around in a uh, toolbox. But you get the idea that uh, wheel and hub works pretty well. So I have to say I am very pleased with that. Alright guys, I think that's about it. This has actually been a couple days of work um, off and on. And more of an odds and ends really, tying up all the loose ends that uh, I had for you know this cutter grinder. I did not have a wrench. I was just using two long quarter inch pins in the vise to take my hubs on and off of the wheels. So we ground down those and it actually you know fits good now and uh, will be a good heavy duty usable wrench. That's quarter inch thick and those are hardened dowel pins so it shouldn't last forever. We struggled through making a keyed washer and unless you have a water jet or a multi-ton punch press or a plasma table you are going to struggle probably at least an hour on one. They're not easy or fun, but you can do it. You know, you don't, and you don't have to make that many, so it's really not that bad. But you got to find some good material to make them out of too. We finished up the hub or the back plate for this powered head chuck, and I'm happy with the way it turned out. I think three tenths is about as good as you can expect, I'd say, out of a chuck like this, and. Uh, It'll work. It's for rough stuff anyway, or bigger things that you're probably not too worried about. We actually used the hub that I've made for the last two weeks for the first time, and uh, I'd have to say I'm pretty happy with the results. It, it runs extremely smooth. So, thanks to all my new subscribers, of course. I've got several new ones lately. I usually get, you know, a bunch every week, and I'd like to welcome you to the channel. And thanks to my old subscribers, you guys already know that. And a big thanks to my patrons. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here. That'll do it. And hit the bell for notifications. I usually post a video every Saturday morning. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.